Hey everybody. This is my first video being shot in the new year 2014 on Q Computer Channel. And here we have a Dell Dimension Parts system. It's actually a full computer. That's because it didn't come from the Google Computer Works store. It came from the Value Village next door. Saw the price on up here, I just had to go and get it. It's $25 and something. Issue with it is it won't come on. Probably a bad motherboard. Maybe a bad power supply. Don't know for sure just yet. But basically when you plug it in, all you get is a flashing amber light inside of the power button. Which is not a good sign. But it's very surprising for this thing because it's built very well. It's got a um, Newton manufacturer power supply. And it's got um, a motherboard that's full of Rubicon capacitors. In fact, the power supply also has Rubicon capacitors in it. So I don't see any bad capacitors in this system. It's just some light so you can see better. Everything looks good in here. No back capacitors. Nothing out of the ordinary that I see. There's some dust. That's to be expected. However, this one was not subjected to the conditions that the previous Dell that I made a video about was subjected to. More or less a truck garage. This one here just appears to be um, from a regular office or something. Maybe from a home. This is your regular dust. thing I like, like about these computers from like Value Village and places like that is they're complete. Or at least this one is. It has everything. Hard drive, memory. It's a whole computer. It just doesn't work for some reason. Let's shine a light to the back of the power supply so you can see inside it. Not sure if you can see or not, but all Rubicons in there. And some other brands, some other decent brands. I don't see any typos in there. The Dells that have um, the hyper manufacturer power supplies tend to have capacitor problems inside the power supply. And a lot of Dells that, that are actually built like this, um, the Rubicon capacitors even tend to go bad because of the heat coming off the CPU. And this system has a Pentium D processor and still has 2 gigs of RAM. I'm thinking maybe somebody had possibly upgraded the RAM over time. There's one stick that says PNY, and the other stick, I'm not sure what it says, it's your typical OEM memory that probably come in this thing. So 2 gigs of RAM, DDR2, here's like the power supply. Pause the view specs. Let me get you closer. Pause the view specs. Anyways, system has a 160 gig hard drive, SATA hard drive, has a DVD burner and DVD ROM drive, both ID, no card reader, but there was a place to put one. Same goes for a floppy drive. The USB ports and your audio jacks. This basic run the mill Dell dimension. So what I'm gonna try to do here is I'm going to just hook up a different power supply and see if the system will come on. Just to rule out the chance of the power supply even being bad. Okay, I decided to go ahead and swap up the power supply for a different one. Pretty much I just set a power supply up here to test. You know, we got it hooked to the motherboard. And let's see what we get here. Not good. At least now it's turning on, but still not doing much of anything. I already did this one time, so I pulled this mirror module out. Okay, got the other memory module in. Let's see if we get the same result or not. I 
acting different this time. So anyways, I'm going to dig out a USB keyboard and mouse and get this thing hooked up to see if we get anything. Yeah, that's the aggravating thing about these Dell computers is most of the newer ones lack PS2 ports for older keyboards and mice. My KVM switch uses a PS2 configuration, not USB. So in order to test this thing, I gotta find me a USB keyboard and mouse, and I gotta unhook my monitor from the KVM switch and hook it up directly to this computer. Okay, got a USB keyboard and mouse hooked up and got the monitor hooked straight up to the system. And what I decided to do was I decided to hook the original power supply back up since it's fine. And what else I did was I took the other memory module and stuck it back in, except in a different spot. I'm thinking maybe the RAM configuration was not something this thing was liking. So let's see if we have life in this thing. I will have to go in and set up the CMOS utility because I cleared the CMOS in the process of troubleshooting this thing. And then we'll have, if this thing works at all, we'll have the next burning question, which I'll talk about in a moment. But anyways, let's go ahead and power it up. Yep, we have life. So we have a fully working computer for $25. Okay, now we're in setup. Excuse the monitor, it's not uh, properly configured. This monitor doesn't auto configure itself or auto adjust. Keyboard doesn't have life. Here we go. Now we got a keyboard. So I guess while we're at we can we can poke through the virus and of course I gotta set the date and time. So anyways, system has a Pentium D processor, 2.8 gig. There's your system info. And of course gotta set the date and time. It is definitely not May 2005 anymore. That was a long time ago. <laughs> It is January 10th. January 10th, 2014. Current time is 1.25. Check the boot sequence. It sees the um, sees the SATA hard drive and the USB or onboard um, optical drive, so we're good to go there. Expand drives. Make sure the proper drives are turned on and off. Yeah, these Dells, you have to configure like every single freaking thing. This motherboard has RAID. That's nice to know. Onboard devices are here. Primary video. Leave that in the factory default setting. Here is the performance area. Multiple CPU core, yeah, we want that on. And what I'll do is I'll set the hard drive acoustic mode to performance. That's something I like about these Dells. You can configure all this stuff. So I'll go and save or changes. And like I mentioned, here comes the burning question. It does this computer still have files on the hard drive again this is not a good computer works system this is a value village computer see if we got an operating system or not
Sometimes Dale buyers just take a while. Floppy disk has seek failure. There's no floppy drive installed. So let's go back and set up. Thought I covered that. Disket drive. And turn that off. Try this again. Yep, we got an operating system. Windows XP. And it crashed. <laughs> so it's not doing too well, but we still had an operating system here. So hey, we at least at least we have a working computer. It's a Pentium D processor, two gigs of RAM, one sixty gig hard drive, DB runner, DB ROM. It's a video card modem. This required a little bit of troubleshooting to get working, and it was only twenty-five dollars. I think it's a pretty good deal. So, anyways, there's your fully functioning computer for twenty-five dollars. And the question for comments. Feel free to ask, and thanks for watching.